Bo Hunt or Die is being brought to you by Matthews, Lost Camo, New Archery Products, Tinks, Lone Wolf Portable Tree Stands, Scent Blocker, Campbell Cameras, and Stealth Cam. Welcome to another action-packed episode of Bowhunter Die. I'm Justin Zarr, and alongside me as always is Todd Graff. You know, Todd, we've got two more really exciting buck hunts to share with our audience this week. We do. You know, it's been a great year. I've been fortunate enough to harvest my second buck here in mm -hmm. Illinois. It's a buck's name is Captain Hook. It turned out to be quite the adventure on the recovery, but it did work out okay in the end. Yeah, you know, I actually got to play a little part in that recovery. But, you know, last week we talked about backing out after an unsure hit, which is what you did. And actually the other buck that we're going to feature this week, which came from Dean Krieger, kind of the same scenario. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit unsure of the hit, so he backed out and, you know, fortunately was able to recover his buck the next day. Right. You know, it's, it's difficult to pull out. It makes really for a sick, sleeping evening. Mm -hmm. But in the end, it is the smartest thing to do. Well, let's jump right in the tree with Todd on his hunt for Captain Hook. Calvary has arrived. Um, Mike and Justin just showed up. They're not hunting that far away from here. So luckily they're able to come give me a hand. You know, that buck came in and I blew it. There's no question about it. I could have been a little bit more calm and I shouldn't have punched the trigger like the way I did. That buck was totally calm. I should have just gave him two more steps and I would have probably had a much better broadside double lung shot. But you know what? We did all the stuff right. We pulled out. It's been over four and a half hours now. So we're going to go over at the point of impact, see if we can find my arrow. I'm pretty positive it was a pass through. We've watched the footage over and over and over. Uh, he went about 30, 40 yards and just stood there for a while. So let's see what we can find. I'm hoping that this buck didn't go too far. Let's take a look. been a lot of blood but we still are on the trail so that definitely makes me feel better. Well, we just jumped them. That's not a good sign. That's enough to make you sick right there. Wait, guys. wait until tomorrow on this one. I'm here with my friend Scott Hill. He's my neighbor. You know what it's so great when you got good neighbors when you own hunting property. There's nothing better and more valuable than a good neighbor. Scott was nice enough to actually he was super nice. He left his wife go hunting this morning and uh, he came out here and helped me track. You know, he went about another 100 yards. We found about four more beds. We just came up around the hill over here and there he is 
He's laying right over there. He must have just went up the hill and then came back down. Oh my gosh, guys, what an awesome looking deer. Come on, take a look at this buck. It's November 7th. You know what? I found my buck, thank goodness, this morning. I shot him yesterday morning. I had great footage. You know, the buck came right in. Um, unfortunately, I made a mistake. I should have gave that buck at least a couple more seconds, and he probably would have turned broadside to me. He's a good four-and-a-half-year-old, nice brown horns, heavy mass. He's got this really unique right side. There's nothing better than shooting a freak buck. I can't wait to check my stealth cams out. I'm hoping I got a couple videos up because this is really a good-looking buck. He's just a good, heavy horn, nice-looking buck. So I am extremely happy. I am tagged out in Illinois. I'm going to head now to Wisconsin. So I've got two tags left in Wisconsin, so I'm going to head up there and see what I can get done in Wisconsin. It's been three years since I put one down up there. So... Woo!